Have you been naughty or nice? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who's the hay coupon? The hay coupon. <laughs> la, la, la. Hey guys! <laughs> oh, wait. Nasty! I'm James Hake. This is the Hake Report. It is Wednesday. No, it's not. It's Thursday, December 19th, 2019. Women's Forum tonight, ladies. I know you're all listening to the Hake Report. <laughs> so, we're live in the 9 a.m. hour of Jesse Lee Peterson's stream. Thank you, Jesse. And thank you guys for joining on YouTube, DLive, Mixer, Periscope, Maria Freeze, Maria Freeze. So, and then I will get to your calls. Appreciate you guys calling in. 888 775 3773. But I just want to briefly tell you that this, in case you missed Hake News at the top of Jesse Lee Pearson's first hour, the impeachment thing is not a big deal. It's just a, um, it's just a phony thing that they're doing because they're phony people. And eventually the phoniness has to catch up with them. And uh, you get enough phony people stirring up their mess together, you're going to get mess happening. So it's silly. And just look at the silly person at the top. Who is more silly than Nancy Pelosi? Nobody. That's who. Except some of the black politicians are pretty silly, too. But, I mean, I think they're pretty much equally silly. I don't know. Equality is irrelevant. Either you're good or evil. And they're evil. I much I stick with Trump. Trump, and by the way, I am wearing <laughs> I'm wearing a king of the cage. Trump is the true king of the cage. Actually, Jesus is the true king of the cage. Am I right? Yeah, king of the cage. Um, I've never even been in a cage, <laughs> so I'm just a fan, a, a, a friend, really, more of a friend than a fan, even. <laughs> Trump wrote a great letter to um, Nancy Pelosi. I think it was yesterday or the day before, I think it was two days ago, the night before they had their big, long, stupid, so-called impeachment debate. And it was a nice letter. I recommend checking it out. I put it in, I put it in the Hake News yesterday, so you can check it out in Hake News by going to thehakereport.com. But, uh, yeah, Trump is pretty solid. Um, the only people who belong in cages are the kids. And the illegals' parents or, and, or fake guardians, guardians who bring them up from South, Central and South America, and maybe some of the Africans who come in through Mexico, trying to get in here to America, taking advantage of our messed up immigration system. We need to have some morals so we can kick them out. And close the borders. Wouldn't that be so nice? Um, I do have a news update for you guys, and then I will get to some calls, and then I will get to a little bit about this Isola Foster woman and the one of the heads of this Project 10 that was the gays coming in teaching homosexuality to the kids in schools. So, terrorism or unions? Was it terrorism or unions? It's hard to tell. And I bring up unions because unions are known for rioting sometimes and just bringing mess and pretending that they are supportive of the workers whom they supposedly represent. But they don't. And then some of them are really radical. Some of the workers are really ra radical. As you've heard Jesse Lee Peterson say, he used to be a union recruiter. And they would go after the angry people, the angry workers. And tried to start a union in, in the companies where they were disgruntled, right? So, Drudge reports, I'm back on Drudge, guys. Like it or not, American Airlines mechanic pleads guilty to sabotaging a jetliner. <laughs> and I read about this in Hake News months ago, I feel like. 
This is from the Miami Herald, and I may have some photos of this guy. I think I do, actually. Some headlines and things. Miami Herald, an American Airlines mechanic accused of sabotaging a navigation system on a Miami flight with 150 passengers in it. It's under the airline mechanic one. Yeah, there's a picture of him. It's a messed up picture. It looks a little distorted, but that's some of the best that they have. Looks like a nice guy, but he... And he looks too old to be doing stupid stuff like this, but... Listen on. He sabotaged a flight with 150 passengers on it. Pleaded guilty Wednesday to attempting to destroy the aircraft in a plea agreement designed to avoid a maximum sentence of up to 20 years in prison. There's a picture of him. He's wearing a tux. I do admit the guilt. And listen to this name. Abdul Majid Maruf Ahmed Alani, age 60, said through an Arabic interpreter in the Miami federal court. All of a sudden, he doesn't speak any English. Alani is a veteran AA American Airlines employee who had lived in California and commuted to his job at Miami International Airport. Wow. Now faces up to three years in prison under a joint recommendation by the U.S. Attorney's Office and his defense lawyer. His sentencing is set for March 4th. These things drag on forever. At his detention hearing in September after his arrest, federal prosecutors suggested that Alani may have... Possible links to a Middle East terrorist group, such as ISIS. But the allegation never came up at this plea hearing before the U.S. District Judge Marcia Cook. Marcia Cook. A female judge, by the way. After his arrest, Alani told federal investigators that he disabled the aircraft's navigation system on the morning of July 17th, my birthday, by the way, because he was upset over stalled union contract negotiations with the airlines. He said that he wanted to generate some overtime for maintenance on the plane. So he sabotaged it. I don't know if I believe that. Maybe. <laughs> but it's awfully suspicious. And it is interesting that the, that the um, terrorism allegation did not come up again during this plea hearing where he pled guilt, plead guilty, pleaded guilty, pled, pled guilty. <laughs> I don't know. So I just wanted to update you guys about that. It's so ridiculous. How would a 60-year-old person be this immature if, if it's just immaturity? Or be this terroristic if it's terrorism? It's supposed to be getting over that stuff. Anyways. Um, this is why I don't have sympathy for the people over in France, by the way. Because... The, all these unions, all these fight for 15 stuff that's going on with the McDonald's workers. They want $15 an hour minimum wage around the country. It's just, it seems like just spoiled, angry people cre- stirring up mess. That's, how, that's my take on it. I think that they're doing quite fine. And yeah, you could say that the people up top are corrupt too, maybe. But... uh for example, in France. France, I think it's a corrupt system. And their revolutions are corrupt. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Chopping people's heads off. Seems like it's probably corrupt. And then I'm referring to the French Revolution. Maybe you guys know more history than me, though. History is so messed up, though. Because look at the journalism. Journalism is messed up. The jur- so-called journalists, you have many journalists saying that Trayvon Martin was murdered. You have them saying that Trump was rightly impeached or something like that. You know, all kinds of madness. Accuse Trump of lying when he's generally telling the truth and all that mess. So if you see that the journalists are so messed up, then of course the historians are messed up. The historians, most of them live at universities. Bunch of intellectuals, communists... And uh, so you can't trust history either, what you read. Just a side note. Um, Let me get to some calls, and then I want to get to this. If you didn't watch Jesse Lee Peterson's um, 90s show that premiered yesterday, 1996 with Isola Foster, the late Isola Foster, 1938 to 2018. Rest in peace, pretty lady. (laughs) Um, You missed it. Check it out. 
Lynette out of Australia. Lynette, how are you? Oh, I don't remember. I remember who this good. is. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm calling because I thought I'd maybe hear from you about what we spoke about. Well, like what I messaged you. You're right. You were we were chatting in the live chat, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Can I tell the people who you yeah. who you are in the live chat? Oh, uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Maybe not. <laughs> you said maybe not. Uh, um, no, I'm sorry. This is Human Girl. She's cool. Right? Mm. So, uh-huh. um, yeah, yesterday I got a call from Kevin who just hung up with Jesse. Um, talked to Jesse today. Kevin from maybe Indiana, I forget. And I had referenced Brother Dean Saxton, a street preacher, uh, maybe more of an open-air preacher, campus preacher, who back in, I would say, 2013, 2012, maybe a little before that, he um, had told students that you deserve rape. You are asking to be raped by the way you dress. And then on the back of the sign it said, death penalty for rapists. And I relayed this message to Kevin and he was taken aback. He's like, that seems extreme. Even though like he went on to agree with me, even though he didn't, he said agree to disagree. He said that they're, it's unwise in what they're doing. They're putting themselves in a bad situation. But, um, yeah, there's, it seems to me pretty undeniable that you dress like a slut, you get treated like one. And it doesn't make the person, the, whoever, whoever does the raping right, but we have to tell the plain, hard, you cold truth. Clothing, you actually think that clothing um, <laughs> is a statement. Like, you don't think it's you, provocative? Yeah. You don't think dressing provocatively is provocative? Well, I, I, like, I don't see it as provocative if it's really hot, for example. Like, uh-huh. it, what's, like you can't, the way someone dresses is just how they dress. Who cares? Like, whatever. Does it really matter? Is it, so you don't think that it's provocative? <laughs> I mean, it could be if yeah. you dress like a prostitute. Right. Maybe. People do. I, 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 Nowadays, more and more women are dressing like prostitutes. Do. Prostitutes do. Huh? Yeah, they do. Do they get raped? No, they get paid. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes they get raped. <laughs> I assume so. Huh? Mm, I just assume that they, they do that because they are, they are looking for Have that. You, how old are you? Like, if you don't mind my asking. <laughs> <laughs> 37 have you noticed that women are dressing more and more and more like prostitutes over well, the course of your 37 years I think it, it's not a new thing it's not a new thing though Like it's been a while now Hollywood right. has always done this that women get attention by being a certain you know yeah. a certain way yep but you have have you noticed that I they've still don't, dressed I can't see. Have Sorry? you noticed that they have dressed more and more like prostitutes? I, I mean I don't know why that would happen. Again, like it's just their, It's just a side note. It's an, it's, it's an important it's kind it's of an interesting side note. Thing, like, Say that again? Yeah, but the way we dress. Yeah, like I just think of the way a girl dresses. I mean, we're in a free society. This is 2019. It's a free Society, I know you said before, like history, I know some of it might be messed up, but some of it we do actually have. And we're at this point now, like, we're all pretty free and we should be free to do as we like. No, and that's not I, freedom. Not sure we're why. not, a, we're less of a free society than, than maybe in the past, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Freedom, so, freedom. So you think that now women should. I mean, I think that women should be conservative. It's yeah. pretty. But right. if a girl doesn't want to dress like that, it, it doesn't mean that she's 
a slut or she's a she's asking for someone to take advantage of her or whatever. But that's what's happening. But that's what's happening because we're bringing in. Not only are we bringing in people that have this culture of this so-called rape culture, (laughs) these people that don't Mm -hmm. that are will very easily take advantage of women, but also we're um, we're becoming more and more immoral as a society. The society has become so immoral, and that's not freedom. That's that only brings on the mm-hmm. stuff that they're complaining about. They're they're pretend they're complaining. Oh, rape, and they're calling stuff rape that's not rape, by the way. But well, they that's are a problem too. Okay. Yeah, but uh, assault is not rape. It's still bad. Um, but yeah, rape is actual, you know, or forceful. Yeah. That's the heavy one. <laughs> but people are so weak and manipulative, yeah. in both the both the males and the females, that nobody's happy. Nobody's actually free. They're just immoral, taking advantage of each other. And but we are free, though. We're not. You know. What What's free, free about that, though? In America. Say that again. What's free about? I was to say, like in America, you have your. I would say you'd have the most freedom out of Western of all of us in Western society. Yeah, but that's so going America that's has, going away though. As the as as people become more immoral, it's going away. Immoral, out of control, mm. and plus we're you trucking in all kinds of nutty people. I, I, but you think? Do you 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 think that? It's it's acceptable to agree that a, a woman that looks a certain way, if she, yes, she is saying, "Come and get me." Yeah, because that's that? because you have to you have to tell them the plain, hard, cold truth because that's reality. People are people are going to be provoked by that because that's dressing provocatively. And so you have to you have to call out both sides of the issue. Mm. You can't just say, "Oh, no, you're just sense. a helpless victim, and you should dress however you want and me- teach men not to rape." It's only dealing with one side of the issue. Like, are you are you not happy to see a woman being a woman though? Like, with all this. That's not called being a woman. Everyone, all of a sudden, <laughs> they don't know what they want. I know. Well, no, it is, mate. It is. It's, it's, That's it's not called being a woman. Short, short and a. No, that's called act, dressing like a slut. <laughs> 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 the weather's really hot. It's 40 degrees here in Australia. I don't know if you know, but it's... it's 40 is freezing. That summer. I only deal in Fahrenheit, <laughs> no, so 40, 40 is freezing. Celsius. <laughs> 40 uh, well, Celsius. Fahrenheit is I understand. Oh, pardon me. 120, I'm sorry. Dang. Yeah, I know. So it's very hot, yeah? <laughs> yeah. If you come to Australia right now, you would see nothing but short shorts and probably bikini tops or like crop tops. All right, just it's be smart though. Hot. Just be smart where you go and and how you dress because there's, <laughs> you know, we're not allowed to. I, it's I hot in the like studio and we're not allowed to wear like, shorts to work. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, but I mean, in a work. But there, I hear totally all kinds of. I'm not Joelle's talking about friend work. I'm one time. About Joelle's friend one time said that she hates clothes on the Hague Report on an early show. <laughs> and I just think that that's an excuse but that women use to um, just dress however they want and just pretend like it's, it's not a provocative. Freedom, man. It's a it's a it's, it's, a, a, it's like a it's denial of choice, nature. Like, it's like you guys hate science. <laughs> I'm not saying you, but what do you mean? Science says no, no, know, men but... are are provoked by visuals, and then when the women dra- dress all visually provocative, they want to act like oh the men uh, I hate I hate Mother Nature and God and, <laughs> and how men act. It's so stupid. I don't know if women complain about. I mean, remember that chick that got slapped on the butt? She yeah. totally blew it out of. <laughs> right. <laughs> she totally blew it out of proportion. Yeah. There are those kind of chicks. She didn't. She got <laughs> slapped on the butt for fuck's sake. There's people that are actually <laughs> hurt, you know, right? Yeah. That's much more serious. That's, it is more serious, I mean, but it's like also victim thing. part of protect but, part of protecting yourself as a woman is not dressing provocatively. 
That's part of being a lady, in all honesty, having some self-respect. But are you not? Are you not saying? Are you not? You're saying though that men are. Do you understand the when you say that? It to me, it sounds like you're saying that men are predators. Are you, wet? Do you want to admit that? Men are wet. Predators. I said it like um, Hillary says it. Okay, <laughs> super predators. predators. Uh, some are, yeah, I guess. You're saying and then, and then the You're women are, women and then the women are willing careful. victims. The women love being victims, or they sometimes they call it survivors, right? But well, some, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, uh, I'm anyway. just saying, you have to call out both, <laughs> both people. And right now, they only want to talk about how evil the men are to the point where they're talking about good men and calling good men evil. They, they accuse Jesse of hating women. Yeah. They accuse Trump of being evil towards women. And Trump is, if anything, he's kissing I up to women. Jesse, that. I said it just before. Oh, you said Jesse hates women? Well, I wonder. It makes me wonder sometimes. <laughs> no, it's called love. It's called telling the truth. He's having a women's forum helping women. No, well, that's cool. That's, yeah. I'm not against that. I know. Yeah, it's it, like you're a nice lady. Thing. The mum's the problem. How is the mum... Why is mum the problem? Like... Unless your mother really he, did do horrible he, stuff to you, and I'm sure that happened. He attacks, the, he attacks the, the fathers, too, for being weak. You can't just say, oh, your mom cut in. He attacks the fathers, too, for being weak. I hope so. Because, yeah. I mean, if you're going to do that blame... You, you don't hope so, you, you know so. <laughs> one of the two. It takes two to make a child. True. It takes two to... Yeah, but but people you can't just but be mum. Forgive your mum. You're so. I think what happens is you're so used to not hearing any blame being put on the women that any blame being put on the women sounds like woman, we're yeah. sounds sounds like we're only attacking the women and not attacking the men. And when in reality, society and the whole rest of even the so-called Christians are the opposite. Mm -hmm. They only attack the men Christians because because the, the men are at the top, and so oh, leave leave the women alone. Let them be evil. When in reality, you have to deal with both. God dealt with both. He he blamed he blamed both the the woman Eve for what she did. He she blamed yeah. the man for what he did, and he blamed the snake, the serpent, for what the yeah. serpent did. So you mm -hmm. you deal with each one, and you don't allow them to point the finger at the others for the wrong that mm -hmm. they that they themselves do. Make sense? I, I still think it's quite unfair. To say that a, a, a woman that is hurt by a man, uh -huh. that, it, that she holds some sort of... I, I don't understand how you can say she holds some sort of responsibility. You have to... Lynette, wearing. Lynette, you have to victim blame. You have to blame the victim. Otherwise, the victim doesn't learn. The, the man did that for power. Rape is about power. No, I don't buy that. Maybe, maybe not. Yes, I, but is. that's that irrelevant. Is. That's irrelevant to what she did to put herself in that position. Because most of the time, or many of the times, the woman is dressing a certain way or getting in a situation, getting drunk at a party. You know how a lot of this stuff goes. Or just walking down the wrong <laughs> dark alley, whatever. You have to blame the victim for well, the stupid I'm things that the victim did. I'm researching what's going on in England. Say that again? The rape. Do you know what's going on in England? Yeah, they're bringing in, in, they're bringing in uh, rape gangs <laughs> and calling them Muslims. Everywhere. <laughs> or something. And it's, happening, it's happening in Germany really bad as well. Yeah. You have to deal with both, though. But the, it's the girls responsible, is it? It's the European women. Most of the girls are liberals. It's, it's, they're it's voting in these... Most of those girls are liberals. They're voting in these liberal politicians who bring in these, these rapists. So, yeah, you kind of have to blame them, too. Mm. All right, I hear you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Nice talking yeah. with you. We'll talk again, Lynette. I appreciate you too. it. All right, take one. care. You too. So, uh, before I get to Project 10, which is kind of on the rocks now because uh, this lesbian who started Project 10 way back in the 80s, is now dead. Died this year, actually. Interesting. So, um, I will get to that. But first, let me get to Frank out of Los Angeles. First time caller, I think, California. Frank, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Fine. How much? How you doing? Doing well, thank you. So, I just wanted to bring up uh, something I noticed. And, you know, it sounds conspiratorial. But 
you know, this whole thing that with Trump being impeached, uh, it almost seems like a distraction from, uh, I guess, more severe issues yeah. going on in the background. And uh, it's almost like the you know, Republicans and Democrats are collaborating on that. And meanwhile, they're cooperating on, you know, things like the uh, NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act that just got passed. I saw that. I mean, I heard a, a little bit about that. That includes the Space Force, by the way. Right. Is that Trump? Is that something that tr- the president wanted? Uh, I mean, I, I would assume so. I, it was, yeah. You know, pitched as a bipartisan. And then the U- and-, and then also the USMCA. United States Mexico Canada agreement that Trump has been pushing. They finally signed that the day that they something announced for right. they were going to bring articles of impeachment. So yeah, right. they are passing these things, and the a lot of these things seem to be a mixed bag. Like Trump is behind it somewhat. I mean, he's behind part of it, and that part I think is usually good, but. Um, some of that stuff I'm not really for. They're, like, instituting these things, like, demands on paying their, for example, this USMCA thing, paying $16 an hour to certain employees by a certain year. It's like, we need less less meddling. But anyways, um, the NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, whatever, I know it involves the Space Force, and I think I heard that they, the Democrats, passed some uh, funding, $75 million or something like that, of funding to the Palestinian Authority, kind of as a snub against Trump, but yet they're also passing things that, are, that Trump has wanted. I don't know. Maybe those things, there are, there are some bad things in them. I'm not... I'm not a wonk, meaning I don't know a lot about these things. Maybe I could bring somebody on who does. But right. for sure, the, the, it is sort of a distraction. Um, even, even this Democrat woman, Tulsi Gabbard, who voted present, she said, why aren't we impeaching, you know, about the lies of the, I think she might have bring, brought this up, the lie of the, which I, it is said that it's a lie, of the weapons of mass destruction to go into war about, um, about, uh, to go into war, the Iraq war. Why didn't we impeach Bush? And then Pelosi's like, ah, that's a waste of time. But partly because that was bipartisan. And so both Democrats and Republicans wanted to go to war. And then they pretended like they're against it. But, um, I don't know. And, and you know, the, the deep state is, the evil one, and so are the Democrats and most Republicans. They're the evil ones. Right. They're the ones obstructing. If they were doing their job, the balance, the bu- budget would be balanced. We would not have open borders because the government's job is to close the borders or seal the borders or protect us at the borders. But they're not doing that. They're just letting these people come in for ill-gotten gain. Right. So well, it just it just makes you want it makes you think like what's really going on when when the media and you know, yeah. the big frenzy on a specific you know topic that just gets thrown on day in day out. Right. It's, it's it's kind of a red flag that hey they're they're trying to keep our focus away from real issues that are going on like yeah and and uh that's fair. You know, it's you know they call it the new world order, the deep state or Illuminati, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, there's, there's evil, you know, satanic people that want to bring about, you know, a system of control and they want to destroy traditional American values and all that. And people are just too busy fighting each other over these bipartisan, you know, and it's, it's all an illusion created by the people who portray themselves as, you know, rivals, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans, they, they're putting on a show, you know, and everybody's in on it, and we're the ones being played. Yeah. yeah. And I, sometimes I wonder if, you know, is Trump in on it? You know, and it, it goes back many presidents, you know, even like Kennedy tried to expose them uh, in, a, in a famous speech about, you know, the deep state, quote-unquote. Oh, he made that? And he's I, the one who coined that term, kind of? 
or popularized um, it? No, but he but he did call out a lot of individuals that were trying to subvert the government and trying yeah. to infiltrate, their, you know, uh, secretly, you know, secret societies and things like that. And it sounds like, you know, tinfoil hat craziness, but it's like we need to take a step back and look like, hey, man, we're, we're being played by both sides here. I would and say I'm, just stick with what you know and what you can what you can plainly tell. So that you don't make a false assumption about Trump or anybody else. And no, I mean, you, I mean, it's just, all that. Yeah, I, I try to look at it at face value, but I, I think it's worth noting, you know, because people get caught up in the, you know, last night we had a huge argument, you know, at the table, you know, and it's like over, and it's like. Who'd you argue with? Sides. It was like uh, the women in our family versus the men in our family. Oh, gosh. Like the, men, the men are like, you know, are like, hey, like, this is just a. They're just trying to do a public hanging of Trump, and it's yeah. like over something. And then the women are like, "Oh, you know, we hate Trump." And it's like it's just people are just t- caught up in this like whirlwind of like what an eye roll, right? Yeah, it's like you know, like you we don't, we don't. <laughs> this is why I don't like women concerning themselves with politics, especially when they're educated like that. So in right, wrong. yeah, all they all went. To, they all went to universities, and yep. you know, they have bachelors and master's degrees, and. It's like good little communists. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate yeah. it, Frank. All right. Well, thanks for taking my call. All right. Take care. All right. All right. See you. Bye. So let me let me quickly get to Thomas out of Texas, and then I'll get you, get this stuff to you guys. Thomas, what's up? Hey, James. Hey. Good to hear from. You. Yeah, you too. Hey. Um. Well, I wanted to talk about some of the illegal immigration going on in uh, southern Texas. or Okay. I, um, well, actually, I, I wanted to say something about your conversation with that Australian girl real quick. Yeah. I just, wanted, I just wanted to say you're always going to attract basically a reflection of what the way you're acting. So if you're not dressing provocative, you're not going to attract the so-called predatory male you know what i'm talking about yeah so i don't know i i I don't think good guys go after you know those (laughs) (laughs) good point you can't you can't you can't lump men into a category all men and say like it has it has nothing to do with the female in any situation like right obviously you're you're i'm not trying to say she is asking for it but she has to realize kind of in the bigger in the bigger picture of things, that she, you can't be dressing like that. You have to respect yourself. Right. Yeah. So, I say I I say that she is asking for it, because you just have to just yeah. say it. Because that's just that's the cut to the cut to the chase type of statement. And yeah, whether really they like is. it or not, they are asking for it. It's I'm not saying it's justified, but you get what you deserve in life, and you people bring a lot of evil upon themselves. I I, wa- I was watching this show where this this guy is a little lightweight drug dealer, gets himself shot, and yep. killed, and um, in a sense he deserved it. He brought it on himself. He was asking for it. So you just have to say, yeah, you get what you deserve, <laughs> because that's like yeah. the only thing that's gonna shake you up and wake you up by just right. telling it as the truth. And and a decent girl, a girl who has respect for herself, is not going to dress in real short shorts with the little um, tops that show her stomach. And right. It's. I mean, I get it if you're going to the beach or something like that, or you're you're you know it's it's summertime and you're you know just out having a you know going to the lake or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you don't go into public like that. You don't go into places where there's a lot of people and. You, it's it's like you're making it seem like this is you know this is who I am this is how I dress even the um, even the culture it didn't used to be it used to be edgy to even wear a bikini right. when I was growing up it, it, it was, most of the time I it was one piece was it would cover it like everything <laughs> but now it, yeah. nowadays they want to show like as seemingly as much as they can yeah of course I mean yep. because we live in this degenerate this degenerate yep. culture that we're in right now and it's all this people listen to rap music and all these especially younger kids like my generation yeah is that's all they listen to they don't they think that's the way to be and that's they've done a 
they've done a number on my generation, but um, yep. it's actually really sad because there are some people who, like me personally, I'm not attracted to women who, it, it tells me that they have no respect for themselves, right. and I'm not attracted to it. So yeah. it, that's, that's saying right there that you're not going to attract a, a predatory male, I guess you could call it. Um, you're not going to ask for anything bad to be done to you if you dress respectfully. It's just the way it is. Yeah. So, um, but I, I wanted to say some things about immigration. I have uh, some family that lives in Del Rio, in Del Rio, Texas. And I actually have a grandfather who, he lives actually on the Rio Grande. So his backyard literally is the border of Mexico. Wow. And people drown on that. <laughs> right. They, they can't swim over because it's a, it's a, river that's going real fast you know so it's hard to basically stay it's it's hard to get over yeah and a lot of them drown so um a lot of them that do get over they steal from his property they steal from the people's property around them and whenever the border patrol catches them they just sent they just let them go they let them back into mexico yeah so they they don't even take them into custody or whatever like and at the same time, it's like, well, they're kind of compromised because if they do bring them there, then it's, you know, we're paying for it. And exactly. it's just a huge disaster. And That's why we need a wall. <laughs> we need that wall really bad. Yeah. And actually, Trump and my grandpa have like a, I don't know, it's like a pin pal relationship. And they like, they write letters to each other and stuff. It's, I, I don't know. I, I don't see him very much, but he loves Donald Trump. I mean, he's got like, Letters from them and wow. signed pictures from them. It's crazy. Your grandpa and, and um, Donald Trump? Yes, I swear. Wow. How recent and, uh, are the are these letters? Do you know? I think they were from 2016 and 2017. Okay, nice. But um, anyways, I wanted to say I think we should build a wall and then another little wall around it, and we should just uh, shoot them all in the in the little. Thing. So, so they get caged in and we should just shoot them all <laughs> no I disavow Thomas that's no, crazy I'm just kidding I'm just kidding is this Travis <laughs> Savage <laughs> anyways yeah I know you're kidding but anyways <laughs> we, we, do, we do need to fix we need to build that wall and did you see the video of those guys scaling the, um, the, the little I guess the wall that the little piece of wall that Trump has already built. I didn't see it, but I heard about it. Dude, it's disgusting, man. Like, they, they, they literally don't care at all. Yeah. They have no respect for our country. Yep. And for anybody that's saying good people are coming over here, that's just, they're just dodging the real situation. They're dodging Very the true. line. Yeah. It's so they're true, man. Lying. There isn't no good people coming over here. They're illegal aliens. Good people don't come in here that way. Right. That's very true. They legally. Yeah. You're totally right, man. Yeah, so it's a huge disaster. My grandpa lives on the border and anybody that's saying that, you know, it's oh it's 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 all within their human rights and whatever, they have no effect on the American citizens that pay their taxes here. It's just a total lie. Yeah. People who talk about so called human rights or civil rights most of the time. Uh huh. I would say 99.999.9% .9 of the time they're fake. They're basically yeah. communists. They're just exploiting. Yeah. They have no respect for the country. They don't care. Right. You know, if they don't care about their country, then they're not going to care about anybody else. Human Coming rights people illegally. are pro-abortion. They're, not for, they're yeah. not for what's right. They just want to, yeah, you know, no. just exploit the white countries and turn them, turn them so-called brown and socialist and globalist. And it, it yep. just exploit the people. Useful idiots follow them, too. It's a shame. Yeah, I appreciate really it, Thomas. I mean, all right, man. Uh, you have a good one. All right. You too. Take care. So, and then I will get to a few more calls, but this Project 10, I have some pictures of, well, screenshots of the late Isola Foster's episode. This is the Friends of Project 10.org website that... Isola Foster and Jesse Lee Peterson and a student from Bell High School and the mother who is uh, Hispanic, speaking Spanish. There was a guy translating for her in the episode. It's funny. But friendsofproject10.org 
is the website for this Project 10 thing. And it was, ten, this Project 10 is named after this stupid estimate that 10% of the country is full-on homosexual. And it was based on this Alfred Charles Kinsey, who's a so-called biologist, professor of entomology and zoology, and he was considered the father of the sexual revolution. <laughs> Idiot. Born in 1894, died in 1956. So, um, yeah, this, it's this, only 10% are full-on homo- heterosexual, and then there's 10%, fully 10% that are exclusively homosexual. Idiots. But uh, this Friends of Project 10, Project 10 is based on the 10% number, right? Stupid. And this Virginia, Dr. Virginia Uribe. Uribe? Uribe? I think she's Italian or something. She's dead now. PhD. So you know she's dumb. Was anyways, now she's dead. Uh, She had this LA Times interview quote that's on the Project 10 website. And it was adopted by the L.A. Unified School District. She was like a Fairfax high school teacher or something. She said, every young person has a right to a sense of self-respect and dignity. In public education, we serve the needs of all our students. Some are gay and lesbian, and we need to serve them, too. We're supposed to be teaching them to live in an increasingly diverse, there's that buzzword, society. Diverse. It shouldn't be a place where prejudice is fostered. It's where discrimination should be fought. So she's a communist. Or was. She's pushing this. She's and uh, I looked up her looked up her Wikipedia. This Virginia Uribe woman, who's now dead. She. Her deepest uh, attractions were always towards women. She married a man, had a couple kids, divorced him, and then later on she got with this this other woman. Came out as a full on lesbian. Gross. And it was still lasting. There's, I have like this screenshot of a, there she is, Virginia Uribe. Looks so nice and innocent. Old lady, but lesbian, evil, exploiting kids. There's her with her so-called wife. And that wife is named Gail Rolf or something like that. Or Wolf, Rolf? Something. There she is, an old lady all sassy with a sheriff's badge. And all the old whites, or whatever they are, laughing. Here's a quote from her from the Lavender Effect. Well, for many years, if you were gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender, there was no way that you could be be yourself. Yeah, right. Like, that's you. That's not the real you. She's, uh, um, attend a regular school prom. So we started having the LGBT prom. Held it off campus. Did it about 15 years. Like, she, she thinks that she was doing something good. Or she knows she's evil. So, this is a, this is a little... This was a hit piece on this traditional values special report. Homosexuals recruit um, public school children. And this is traditional values, so this is anti-gay, right? And it says activists use safety, tolerance, and homophobia word, buzzwords, right, as tactics to promote homosexuality in our nation's schools. And that's what Project 10 was pretending to be. The, it was pretending to solve... Go over to Virginia, gay Virginia, Gina Uribe. There's, like, more, more stuff. Well, you're, you're in there, actually. There's this MSNBC thing. There's Gail Rolf, Rolf, Gail Rolf, the surviving widow, if you want to call her that. It's disgusting. Surviving homosexual lesbian partner that stuck with this woman. So, MSNBC, Virginia MSNBC, there was this whole feature, called, and it was called Fearless MSNBC, of course, promoting this, right? I guess they have a, a lesbian as their top host, right? I forgot about him, her. I almost called her a him. Dr. Virginia Uribe reflects on starting the first dropout prevention program for LGBT youth. That's the pretense. They're trying to dis- diminish discrimination so that the LGBT people don't drop out. See, they have the, they have the focus on, instead of morality and, and character and working hard, they want to attack so-called discrimination and e- p- promote so-called education. 
Oh, it's kind of like handing out condoms to diminish teen pregnancy. Or, um, in giving them abortions. And giving them the pills. Stupid stuff like that. It's, you can always count on a liberal woman. Or a female-minded beta male. Here's another quote from the Lavender Effect. The fact of the matter, LGBT equality and liberation is essential to liberation of all society. And that's from some apparent lesbian, maybe, or something. Mia Yamamoto. A POC. Japanese, I think. But you can always count on the, on the um, stupid liberal women and beta males. Or women, period, to be honest, sometimes. Swoop in and come, in, come up with a false solution to a problem. Sometimes they don't even identif they identify something that's good as a problem. This was a book, I'm showing a book called Shadow in the Land by Congressman, I think his name is William Dannenmeyer, who is a conservative guy from Ignatius Press, right? It's like a Catholic outlet, I think about homosexuality in America, gay power, and he, you know, there's a lot of early fighters that some of, some of whom have been forgotten. I don't know how many of you guys heard of Isola Foster, but she was a, a solid, beautiful woman. She was black, and Jesse Lee Peterson talked about her. Show the pictures of her from the, from the um, episode, Isola Foster folder. Um, meanwhile, I'm gonna get to some calls. I think I get, got to everything. Oh, by the way, if, in case you haven't decided to boycott Netflix yet, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I gave Joel like, way too many pictures and folders and things. I'm white. No, I'm more, like, intellectual, right? Netflix movie showing Jesus is a gay man slammed by Texas Bishop as blasphemy. Good. The Texas Bishop uh, attacked, attacked who? The Netflix people. Because there's this stupid show, I guess. Or it's a movie, Netflix movie. Catholic Bishop of Tyler, Texas joined the more than one million people denouncing Netflix after it re released a satirical religious comedy depicting Jesus as in Jesus Christ, as a gay man. The film's called The First Temptation of Christ. Evil premiered on Netflix Brazil. You can always count on the Brazilians. <laughs> Just playing. On December 3rd, ton of controversy. Black Jesus was funny. I mean, it was just kind of like the typical black stuff. I didn't really, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about black Jesus now. <laughs> But this is disgusting. Um, let me get to Robert out of Bay, the Bay Area, up in up in NorCal, kind of. Robert, what's up? Yo, hey. yo, what's up, man? Second time caller. Right okay. on. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, man. Just uh, just going through it, man. Missing my children, man. I just I'm a young guy, dude. I'm 33, man, and you know, been with my wife next year will be 15 years, man. And, just found out uh, that she's not, you know, not from this country, man. And she's she took me to court, got full custody of the kids, man. Put a restraining order on me, man. I don't know, like, man, it's crazy. You know, she used to like, she used to. I was a beta for a while, man. She used to, you know, give me the right hook all the time and hit me all the time. Wow. Yeah. She Mexican, <laughs> or was she Mexican or some other southern? She's from Honduras. Okay. She used to tell me she was Puerto Rican. You know, I'm I'm Mexican and Puerto Rican. <laughs> okay. And, uh, I'm Mexican, Puerto Rican, and white. Okay. But, uh, yeah, she's the freaking, she's giving me the right hook, man, all the time. The, the woman's right, you know, the right to hit a man. And, <laughs> you deserved and freaking, it, man. Um, I mean, uh, you I, deserved it for getting with the crazy lady, kind of. But, it, you know, everyone kept, you know, telling me, call ICE, call ICE, you know. Yeah. I slipped up, man. I called ISIS, man, but uh, ISIS? she doesn't have that right <laughs> hand anymore to hit me, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I did uh, call ICE, but, uh, yeah, they... That didn't really help me or nothing like that. I, mean, I just want to see my kids do that. Yeah. I got no lawyer. She's like, you think like Latina girls, like, <laughs> got to kind of like, are you know, like some like Latinos or other people from the other countries, got to kind of like lower your education for them. Like, not these, not my wife, dude. She's hella brilliant, bro. She's hella smart, bro. Has her own company. Like, what you know, that? like, 
the broker for you know for insurance and shit and it's like dude I, she's got hella money for a million lawyers and i'm over here like you're honest can I just it sounds she him? sounds like a con man she really is dude she really is because man. you and married her not knowing that she was an illegal I married her out of my Christian heart, dude. Out of like, hey, this was right. <laughs> So-called for my Christian. Kids, that's the, that's the wrong kind of Christian, man. So many people oh, do I know. that. Oh, I know. I've heard dude, a lot I of hate... stories like this, uh, and that's so oh. bad. And I'm, I got played, man. I called you guys before. I was a little like stressed then. I know. Like, I remember. Honestly, like honestly, like after Thanksgiving, man, I I like. I, I just freaking manned up, dude. I just manned up. I was like, what would, you know, you know, what would Jesus do? I was like, what would Jesse do? You know, what would, <laughs> what would JLP do, man? And I just, I just had to like nut up and man up and toughen up. And so, just so you, like, you know, go, so you called uh, ICE and they, they said that basically they can't do anything because you're in the Bay Area. I guess, I guess, yeah, well, I guess the thing is, sanctuary under state, sanctuary city. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, I like will never see my kids again. Dude. I see them in my dreams every night and I just like, I don't know what to do. I just I'm praying that God like softens her heart or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> the more man, the more manly I become. Hopefully, the more like she'll just see like. You know I mean, now I'm paying like hell of child support, taking all these. Have you con- have you me. contacted the the family court or anything? Yeah, we went to court for all this, man. She said that I've been raping her for. Do, but do, years. The, do the does the court know that she's illegal? Yeah, I tried to mention it they, in the court. They looked at me like I was the most racist motherfucker ever. I was like, I'm trying to tell them, like, there's no such thing as racism. But, you know, they don't like <laughs> And you're, crazy you're, you're Mexican and Puerto Rican and white. Anyways, uh, I know. the white part. I'm, I'm a little black, too, man. So I just started doing stand-up now. I've been doing stand-up lately. That's funny. Uh, I bomb yeah, you sound, like, you sound like you do stand-up. That's another thing harder to do. Well, so, man, have you done, do. have you, um, do you do Jesse's silent prayer? I do the silent prayer every day, man. I do the uh, silent prayer every day. I try to do it twice a day. Or I try to just do it throughout have the you, day, man. Have you been up, able to get on air with Jesse or call him for counseling? I have not, man. I have not. Um, call him I, for I, counseling. I, I don't know. I kind of, I'm kind of like, I'm liking you now. Ever since I called you, I called you <laughs> accidentally last time. I was like, man, I'm kind of feeling hate now. That's my boy. Right on. But hey, yeah, listen. Man, I just get, I'd love, get man. I, I wish I can be like you guys, man. One day on your guys' team, bro, and just. And have my that's I that's like that I feel like that's the only way I'll get my kids back is just talking about it and it's crazy, dude. Make sure they make sure that back. you're right because you're right. If you're, you're absolutely right. If you are living right, then um, that'll be a, I mean that'll be the best thing for your kids whether whether they make it with you or not. But um, call right, call man. Jesse for the counseling. He he ha- he offers private one on one counseling. Mm-hmm. And you can schedule it. It's quite man, affordable. I got, I got so played by my wife, dude. She had like, what? You don't have money? Schools. No, she. Li- uh, I do. I I work. Okay. Uh, I'm homeless. I, I just bought a truck, and yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I told. <laughs> I talked to the counselor, uh, Jesse's uh, the lady who answered. Oh, okay. I'm gonna. Pay, I'm gonna pay them in cash, man. I'm just gonna like send the cash. Okay. And get the counseling that way. Yeah, I already talked to them, and right on. you recommended it to me, man. Yeah, you can do it over the yeah. phone. That's there is up, yeah. there is Skype or in person. So whatever. Oh, that's tight, dude. I didn't know they did Skype like that. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I'm just trying to see my kids again, dude. This is it's a crazy world, but yeah, I'm staying like really positive after I talked to you last time. And, <laughs> and you should do some counseling one day, Hake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All Jesse, right, man. Jesse Lee Jr. over here. All right, man. Take care, brother. You too. Much love, dude. Later. All right. Rick out of Hampton, Virginia. Rick, what's up? What's up, James? I hate great boys. La, 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 la. What's going on, brother? Not much. Good to hear from you. Man, like, why well, I sue James? Hey, I'm Rick, make sure you turn off the radio. I'm oh, hearing... Okay, I'm sorry. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. I just hear the radio, too. It's a little distracting. Oh, okay. Sorry, but I did have it up too loud. But sorry about that, James. And I just want to comment, man, how all these people are trying to celebrate that, um, how the house is coming in peace Trump. I said... Because the Trump ain't going nowhere. They're I know. Just take, just, they just getting y'all an emotional high. Yep. Yeah. That's all they doing. Just cool it. It's it's fine. Trump is handling it like a man. He had his rally, his cr- Merry Christmas rally, is what Right Side Broadcasting called it. I don't know if that's what Trump called it. Maybe it was. But we mm-hmm. say Merry Christmas. <laughs> now I we can mean, say it again. <laughs> President Trump is a smart man. You know, you know how he he wants to sit up the actual witnesses. Yeah, because if they actual witnesses, that puts Biden on the spot. I know. Very good point, man. Yeah, and um, 
hey, I'll tell you, President Trump, this, this guy, he, he's a genius. And not yeah. only is he a businessman, he know he, he does, he, he used to this kind of situations, man, he know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> and that makes him, man, um, I mean, President Trump is a smart dude. And um, yeah. I agree with um, Harry Reid, the former majority leader for the Democratic Party. He says, you guys don't know what you're dealing with. Trump's a very smart man. Wow, Harry Reid said that, huh? Yeah, That's yeah, nice. Harry Reid, it was a Facebook article he was saying that. The guy with the black like, eye. Yeah, the one from Nevada. He was he was evil too, or is evil, I think. Yeah, I just call him Dingy Harry. That's what Rush called him. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, and that's and yeah, he was saying President Trump is a very smart guy. Yeah, y'all so true. Y'all can't go with this dude with no emotions. You got to have your stuff together with President Trump. That's, I guess that's Harry Reid is. I guess Harry Reid's the one who called the Tea Party terrorists. He's an yeah. evil guy. He, he was at that time. He was the majority leader. Yep. And um, it, it, it's amazing. I'm I'm telling you. And see, President Trump wants him to call witnesses because that 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 gonna bring President Vice President Biden and his son to the front Th- force. Uh, that would be forth. nice. I would love I that. Like, I, I don't know if Democrats. I don't know if the Republicans in the Senate have the nerve because that would take nerve like only Trump has. But we'll see. We'll see what they do. Yeah, that would be interesting, man. I yeah. want to comment on how women dress, too, man. You know, it's a shame, you know. Yeah, women can dress provocative. Yeah, yeah. they have a right <laughs> to dress like that. But at the same time, man, we men just got to practice self-control, you know. Yeah, and... You know, they're going to they gonna dress like that. And I have a beautiful wife. And I'll tell her, if you ever come see me, look beautiful without showing the goods. Right. <laughs> you know, and, yep. and a woman can do that. You know, you come and look very nice. And a lot of women don't realize guys talk to you how you dress. Yeah. True. Know, and then, and then that's all. Well, we have a right to dress how we want. Yes, you do. That doesn't you do. make it right. But Right. Don't make it right. And, and it doesn't I, mean I don't you don't deserve it. it when <laughs> something negative happens. Right. If a guy, like that um, guy uh, was running track, and I don't think he meant it. He, Slap the report on her rear end. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that, but, um, Me you know, he apologized. I mean, this woman acted like she was about to, it was about, she was about to die the next day. <laughs> I know. He took I my mean, power away from me, she said. Crazy. How's it? How I should use that? that one. Actually, he was giving you a compliment. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, he said you look nice. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, I mean, he apologized. But um, I don't know how these women be dressing for. What's with these liberal women? Yeah, they will sit up there and be dressing half naked, um, taking all kind of photos with guys, and then somebody smack them on the rear end, and they want to sit up there and, and cry. I'm telling you, man, that feminist group, man, they have. Oh God, man, they they encourage women to um sue. You know, when they have um cases thirty years ago to come up front and sue. Oh yeah, the liberal women encourage that. Rick, I appreciate it, man. I'll talk to you again. Hey, likewise. Love you guys. God bless. Talk to you all tomorrow. All right. Vanessa out of Las Vegas. Vanessa, what's up? Hey, I heard your comment on uh, Netflix, and I wanted to add to it. Okay, go for it. Okay, so there's this show that I thought was based, but it definitely isn't. I don't know why I figured that they would create something wholesome and good Uh called Call the Midwife. And I thought, oh, this is going to probably help you know, these dumb feminists wake up and realize that pro-choice is evil. Um, But there was this one episode where this wife was, was like, about to birth, you know. She was, like, super, super ready to go. Yeah. And she didn't want her husband around. Turns out she was cheating on her husband while he was at work. Oh, boy. And uh, she she told the the midwives and the nuns, and the nun, she's like, hey, you know, uh... You could just commit paternity fraud. She didn't say it in those terms. Right. She said, oh, but like, you know, how will your husband know the difference? And she's like, oh, well, it was a black man. And so <laughs> not only were they like helping her, like en- like enabling her to, you know, keep this hush and make yeah. sure her husband wasn't around, they spoke to an adoption agency and they were going to give up her baby and they were going to lie to her husband and say that she miscarried. Wow, that is so evil. Disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, super evil. And, like, uh, the nuns uh, were Anglican, you know? And this is supposed to take place in the, the 1950s, I believe. Wow. 
awful. Yeah, they try to make the they try to make the past generations to seem as corrupt as the present, and mm -hmm. I'm not buying it. And yes, I'm there was corruption for sure, but yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it, Vanessa. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, talk to you again. All right, bye. All right, yeah, the Obamas signed on to Netflix. That's when a lot of people uh, quit Netflix. Show the Obamas, they bought an $11.75 million home from Martha's Vineyard on nearly 30 acres, according to a report. That was from Fox News. Look at that. Beta couple. Hot computer smell. 10 seconds. Go for it. <laughs> I don't have enough time, but hey, I love your show. You're amazing, and thank you. I appreciate it. Hot computer smell. I'll talk to you again. All right. Take care. I want to hear Earl. I want to hear your Earl. <laughs> well, uh... uh... You sit here and you're saying, uh, uh, you idiot, I think, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, baby Farrakhan. <laughs> nice to hear from you. Hi, <laughs> <My> baby Hitler. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> Get it off your chest Friday is tomorrow on the Jesse Lee Peterson Show and then the Hake Report. And then, of course, Sunday Church and Sunday the Hake Report on Hake's channels. And, of course... Women's Forum tonight, ladies. Don't miss it. Be there or be Red Square. Goodbye.